Hey guys, welcome to another virtual release with uh, myself and Fabian here. So we're about to jump into our 2020 Riesling. Fabian, I'll let you do the honors and open that while I give a little bit of the backstory. So 2020 vintage year, white wines. Uh, a lot of you guys may or may not know, but your white wines and your sweet wines standardly see the bottle faster than your dry red. So if you drink a little bit of everything uh, and you're saying, well, this is 2020 all up, uh, already out, that's one of the things we've been trying to do is actually get our sweets and our whites in the bottle quicker for the most part. We think it kind of helps make a better wine and keeps a lot of those little nuances from flavor standpoint together. Um, this has been called, on a non-winemaking note, this has been called one of our prettiest bottles. It is very so pretty. It's a pretty bottle, it's a totally different look. Uh, our, our bottle, our bottling crew, our winery rats would tell you they hate these bottles because they fall over because they're big and tall on the bottling line. So they have a propensity to make a mess, but they are a sharp looking bottle. Um, so it is something we'll kind of outside the bottle art, which 70% of people in the world buy wine based on what they see on the shelf. So it is important, but we're just hearing you talk about the technical aspects of this wine. Um, so Fabian, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? What do you know about this wine? Um, well, as far as the wine goes, Riesling has always been an interesting varietal to me. Um, just because it does have like a nice acidity to it most of the time, you know, and it's kind of like a brighter, sharper, sweet white, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I like to pair it with a lot of different things, you know. I can drink this with almost anything. I love to enjoy it in the summertime, of course. Um, it's just super refreshing and... Um, as far as like our Riesling, I believe it comes down from like the Cruces area, right? Oh, uh, this is actually going to be Paula DeAndre's Paul in DeAndre. 2020. Mm -hmm. Yep. 2019, we did have some Cruces fruit mixed in. Mm -hmm. That wasn't available this year. So we're, the majority of the Riesling does call, come from Paula's and you're down in Deming. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is one of the things that for, for me, I think is always, uh, cool to showcase the grower because it is yeah. very unique. He now knows what he's doing, he know? definitely knows what he's doing. Yeah. So he's one of the bigger vineyard managers in the state, and that's a that's a, a great, great uh, homage to Paul because you can do a lot with his riesling. Now a lot of drinkers out there go, well, I've had riesling mm -hmm. and I don't like it, mm -hmm. or I only like dry riesling, mm -hmm. and and there's a whole thing about that. You want to jump into a little bit about the riesling backbone and yeah. and maybe some of the German heritage of the varietal itself. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. I think. Um, I don't know. I'm not an expert on German wines, of course, but I do know that they are like one of the only regions that will produce wines and charge more just based on like sugar content. Like the right. You know, and it's crazy that they have these like super expensive Rieslings. So you have Harvest Master comes in in Germany mm -hmm. and insert German accent here, and he's like, "It is time to pick this," mm -hmm. and that's I believe like the Spätlesen, right? And that's mm -hmm. the first round. And I think it goes like all the split lesson, and then it's it just keeps going yeah. and gets more expensive. Yeah. So yeah. then that last round of Riesling, what people know is like all of Germany might produce twenty cases, mm -hmm. and the bottles go for hundreds of dollars a bottle, if not thousands of dollars a bottle, just based off that harvest date. Yeah. So it's a very controlled setting mm -hmm. in there. But yeah, it's a it's a weird part of it, it of, the, of the variety the itself. Do that, yeah. And I don't think anybody else does it that way, which is kind of interesting um i've had some dry rieslings i do enjoy some dry rieslings for sure i think uh you know the, the grape itself is just so i don't know like you can make it so many different ways now it's so interesting one you know so we're going to do a little taste here in a second but can you name the thing that people say they taste in riesling this is like the one thing i don't think you should ever say you taste in wine uh i mean i think most people's complaints uh they say it's like dish soapy or petroleum. Petroleum is another one. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And so that's interesting that they'll <laughs> almost intentionally sometimes make it to taste with like petroleum and, or dish soap or however you want to put it. And it's just like different winemaking styles, you know? And it's, and it's, and it's, I mean, I see it in the varietal. I definitely mm -hmm. get those notes at times. You know, mm -hmm. I think we leave ours, especially in this example, it's gonna be sweeter, mm. uh, a lot more floral, a lot mm. fruitier, so you're not, guys, I'm not like making you at home be like, hey, drink this yeah, petroleum. petroleum uh, but then notice, it is a bridal characteristic, mm. you know, so those are those are always the ones that I always like stick in my mind because yeah. it's like, that's such a strange characteristic, you know, sure. it's just like the Sauvignon Blanc cat pee. It's yeah. just like, whoa, like yeah. who was drinking cat pee? Yeah. Like why did this come up? Like, reductive, <laughs> like reductive wines, you know, and that's just wines that are made you know, with minimal oxygen contact, and that's what you get is like you get some weird flavors. 
whenever you're doing really reductive and they come out pretty you know don't get me wrong they like come out looking like water mm-hmm. but it's just like oof I don't know I don't want to be straining my yeast where it's just like that's what you're producing you know mm-hmm. so yeah and that's you know so that's stylistically guys as you know that's you know Fabian's preference my preference in the winery it's a discussion we have during harvest and pre-harvest with our team and some of the people that you know we trust and say hey like stylistically we want to go here we want to do this and we usually hopefully have intention in mind when we're making a bottle of wine sure um so we know what direction we're going right yeah. we're not going to try to go like super reductive and then bounce it back for yeah. our sweet drinkers or whatever and yeah. so it, it, it might be something you know, i think if we have demand for dry recently i would play around with dry recently sure. someday i think it's something we could do Absolutely. and i think you guys will see as drinkers that over the course of course of time uh, our recent sweetness has changed. The styles have changed. I think you'll see that with a lot of our wines. So that's where it's always fun to go from vintage year to vintage year. Um, so with that, without further ado, let's jump into this. So guys, at home, you know, if you have your tasting sheets that we have online for you, this is the time. We're just going to kind of breeze through it, but this is where you can go ahead and make those notes and kind of try to match it up with what we're saying. So Fabian, as always, what are we going to do? We're going to check this thing out, get a little color. Yeah, one. I think, you know, based right off the bat is just like the color. And, um... I'd call that kind of like a straw. Like a, that was that was what I was going to say. Yeah. It's like that straw colored. Mm-hmm. So it's not super golden. Mm-hmm. Um, varietally speaking, I think that this is kind of the color you see this varietal most often to be. Um, it's not going to be that, like you said, like translucent white wine. You're not yeah. going to see there. It's not going to look like water. It recently always seems to have a little more color. I've never, uh, and, and, and if you see the skins come in, it's more of a brown, yeah. it's like more of a brown than a green when it comes in the winery. It's more of those brown, yellow shoes, so I think that's a, a chunk of where the color does come sure. from. Sure. Um, so, what it's are you already jumping out of the glass. It's crazy, like just on opening the, the bottle, I was like, oh. Yeah, I had, to, I had to smell it. It's, I, I would say it's one of the most aromatic wines out there. So, Riesling and Muscat are two for me, and it's just anytime they're in the winery, I know they're in the winery. Like, yeah. I could walk you over to the tank that they're in. It's just yeah. like, yeah, that's where they are, because they, they're very aromatic. Mm-hmm. What are you smelling? What are you getting? You know, so it's the, here's one I've not smelled on Riesling before, but I did get like a little like underripe banana up front. Like I got yeah. I got that a little bit, and that's not something I smell that often actually. And I usually don't like bananas, mm-hmm. so that's probably why I don't smell it that often. Sure, but uh, I got that right away. Yeah. And then I am getting a lot of that, like, you know, like the tropical fruits medleys coming through on the back end. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, to me, it smells like a umbrella drink that I would get at a beachfront bar. I'm getting a lot of yeah. that coming through. Yeah. Um, Almost just like, oh, I'm getting like fruit cocktail. Yeah. You you know, I can see that fruit for sure. Fruit cocktail or um, canned peaches, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah, definitely. I was about when to it was say over here, I was like, fruit. canned peaches. I was like, man. And it's it's it has such pretty aromatics. I mean, it is. It's it's a gorgeous glass of wine from the nose. Um, when you said banana, is like oh yep. Yeah. So it's and it's so so guys at home as we get into this all the time. You might be at home. You're like what? Are, yeah, I don't smell any of this. Yeah. It's okay. We all smell and taste differently. So that's where it, this is just totally subjective. So you guys make your own notes. You're not crazy. It's not that you're doing this wrong. If you don't mm-hmm. smell, what we smell. Um, and a lot of times, like, it's kind of funny, like pause it as we start our smelling and then you'll see like, oh yeah, I do smell that. Or no, I don't smell that. And I hear that most of the time, but yeah, to me, I get those like tropical fruits, orchard fruits. I get all these, like, I could definitely see that fruit cocktail when you're a kid opening yeah. up that fruit cocktail as part of your lunch, jumping in yep. or parents, you probably still do that all the time. I've not had a fruit cocktail. It kind of makes me want to go. I know. Right? A cocktail. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what, what do you get? Let's go ahead and jump into it. What do you get as far as taste and all that good stuff goes? Thing. So it's definitely got a little bit of a bite. Um, yeah, kind of uh, slight citrusy on the palate, you know, just, um, yeah, like on the finish, it kind of like hits the back of the tongue. It might be the alcohol. It's a little hot, I feel mm-hmm. like. Kind of get the taste of alcohol for sure. Yeah, I would say it's definitely a little higher alcohol than some of your sweets. Um, I think it truly is, I would say, semi-sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe off dry to semi sweet. I wouldn't say it's overly sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think actually, you know, from probably when we first put it in the bottle, I think it's actually kind of like yeah. it's shaped up a little more and, and changed. And, and that's yeah. so that's something you know, guys, for you, you know, understanding like we have a desired level of of RS that we're going to try to obtain. But 
Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, the acid can change it, you know, just the year that's, that's mother nature. And sometimes that's us as winemakers. Um, I wouldn't say it's, I would say I, I get a lot of that. Like I assumed you, you kind of get that, like get a little bit of that tartness, like that almost like green apple tartness. Yeah. It's almost like green apple and peaches, you know, like Mm -hmm. canned peaches again. Um, switching it around, definitely get more peach than anything, I think. Um, but yeah, the green apple is a good way to put it. Um, and then I'm still like, yeah, it's, it's burning me. I'm like, Ooh, but I'm again, sensitive to alcohol. So. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I think it's probably one of our higher alcohol, mm-hmm. uh, sweets. So party. there you go. Sweet drinkers. You get more bang for your buck as far as this one goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I think it shows really nicely. I think it's, a, a it's pretty complex, honestly, mm-hmm. I think between the nose and the mid palate, um, you know, so it, in, in the finish, I mean, what are you getting on the finish? I think that's where I'm getting like the citrus notes, you know, whether either lime or lemon, mm-hmm. um, probably more lemon, uh, really ripe lemon because it's almost like a sweet citrusy finish. Yeah. So, you know, like, uh, it's rare that you have a lemon that you want to just eat by itself you know mm-hmm. the, I've, I've had some that are pretty sweet for sure yeah i, I could see that sweet lemon coming mm-hmm. to you like almost like a lemon tart finish to it yeah yeah maybe like a lemon drop or something like that yep but i could see that um i, th- I mean i think overall very enjoyable i definitely think you know as far as pairings and so you guys will probably know from me that i like to pair with a variety of things and I think pairings are you know can be way overdone and way overstated from the wine industry standpoint because i think it's too often you walk away from what the person wants to drink and you get more into what they're eating and then trying to pair what, what that would be, but you're not taking into you know, consideration with what they're drinking is also as important as what they're eating. And so I, you know, for me, I, I kind of pair it around the board, but I, I definitely would love this with spicy food. I think Riesling's, you know, a lot of sweet wines do well with spicy food. So sure. I could see, you know, maybe, uh, this going down with some green chili stew, stew to kind of help balance it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some softer cheeses it would be nice with if you're doing sure. some pairing. So, you know, like maybe I'm like on a green chili kick, but maybe like the green chili jack that we have at the store would do that. well. I can see that. Yeah, the same would cut through the, the creaminess of that cheese for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's uh, definitely not, you know, as far as our sweet drinkers go, I think it's going to be like right there on the cusp. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, if you're at home, you're like, well, you know, my friends drink dry, I drink sweet or vice versa. This could be something I think everybody at the table would be happy with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would, I, I like the, you know, you said summertime pairing earlier, but I think for sure this is summertime pairing central. I think charcuterie you board, you know, like raising a charcuterie board would be like, or like, as like, as we like to call it a Shakira board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think it's a, a great, it's a nice, clean, crisp wine. I like the acidity. I think it's a good, uh, first bottle as well as the evening. If everybody mm-hmm. wanted a little sip of something just to kind of cleanse that palate because yeah. the acidity is there and because it is just kind of bright and vivid and, mm-hmm. and has such a beautiful nose to it. Um, yeah. and I think it's a, it, it's a very, on uh, it's a v- very noticeable nose. Like mm-hmm. you're, you couldn't walk past it, you know, yeah, and not like, know what it, it was. was. It was two feet away from my nose, you know, and it's like, man, that was just jumping out of the glass. But as far as pairings go, I think, you know, if, if I was a sweet drinker, and I'm gonna have, like, let's say I'm gonna sit down and have steak, salad, and potato. Very common meal in my family. It's like I could give this to my mom, and she's a sweet drinker, and she would enjoy this with that meal mm-hmm. because it is acidic and it is a bit of a palate cleanser. So you cook a nice juicy steak, and then you have your salad, the greens and your tomatoes in it, and your carrots and all that. It's like this is gonna go well with that meal mm-hmm. as well. Because the acidity is going to be able to cut through all the other flavors of like the steak or the potato or whatever. No, I agree. And I, and I think that's a good point. You know, sometimes too, guys, it, you're drinking also for something that is just cleansing the palate. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if you had a multi-course dinner, this would be a good thing to throw in to help, you know, kind of break it up and transition up and refresh your palate. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you and I both know that from when you're drinking a lot of wine, at, like, you know, competition oh, or something yeah. you're judging. Yeah. Like you need those palate cleansers yeah, or else your absolutely. palate does get kind of stale and you really, Something everything does blend together. Bright, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. I mean, it's, it's, um, I think this is the most vivid Riesling we produced, you mm-hmm. know, I think it really jumps out of the glass, uh, and, 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 and not to be disappointed as far as the mouthfeel of it. I think yeah. texturally speaking, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's bright and acidic and mm-hmm. jumps all around and mm-hmm. 
I think it's just a fun glass and bottle of wine to enjoy. Yeah, I think it's it's like the acid is comparable to uh, the uh, Nuevo Verde that we did. Nice mm-hmm. and sharp, like really bright. Um, but it's a little bit more silky on the palate, I think. I can see that. I think I, maybe it's just because of the sweetness, but um, I think it's like a little softer and like, you know, I, I just keep saying canned peaches, but it's like that kind of like texture, you know? Yep, I can see that for sure. Um, well, I mean, that's that's pretty much my notes on this 2020 Riesling. You have anything else you'd like to add for our, our friends at home? You know, so guys, uh, get those tasting sheets out, taste mm-hmm. it yourself, check it out, come in, see us. Mm-hmm. We get to see all of you very soon. We're getting to open back up, so that's very exciting for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know what, this is a less than like 200 case production a year for us. This mm-hmm. goes very quickly, guys. I think we sold out in like five or six months of this last year when we yeah. released Riesling, so... If you like our Riesling, get it now. Okay, that's that's your plug to buy now. So you guys already have some sitting in front of you, but grab some more because this, I think it'll go quick. Because it's, it's a unique bottle of wine. Yeah. Just Quite honestly, bottles. I see our distro team being all over this. Mm-hmm. I think restaurants would love this. So um, I like the style. I think it's a great hybrid. So mm-hmm. um, with that, you know, cheers to you and your team at 2020 Harvest and all you guys at home. And we hope to see you soon. Cheers. Cheers, guys.